As we just saw, in linear methods, we can actually quite often solve the problem exactly, in some cases analytically, by matrix inversion and all of that, at least in the regression case. But for the purpose of deep learning, we may not necessarily want that. As a matter of fact, we might not even want this in the case where we can solve it analytically. So consider the following situation. Let's say I have a lot of houses with house prices. And all those houses look very, very similar and the prices are very similar. In that case, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have all the data to be looked at in order to update the parameters because all the observations will tell you exactly the same thing. So you're not going to learn a lot. You might be much better off taking a small subset of the data, updating the parameters and moving on and therefore getting much faster progress. So this is something you can do with stochastic gradient descent. So let's look at gradient descent first. So what you do is you choose some starting point, W0, and you repeat to update the weight at time, you know, one, two, three. And so I get WT is WT minus one, minus, and then I take a step in the direction of the negative gradient. And so with this, I can minimize my objective function. With the gradient, of course, is a direction that increases the value, so therefore moving in the negative gradient direction decreases things. The learning rate eta, in this case, <coughs> is a hyperparameter that specifies the step length. In this picture, the optimization problem is very nice, and arguably we could have taken slightly more aggressive steps, but, you know, this gets us to a solution. So if I pick very small step sizes, then Yes, I will make progress at every step, but I'll take baby steps and it will take a very long time. On the other hand, if I take really big update steps, then I end up overshooting the target quite often and end up overcorrecting. It takes a very long time too. As a matter of fact, if I take way too large steps, then the optimization problem will diverge and I'm worse off than before. So small steps make things inefficient, very large steps will break it entirely. Okay, so what you do is you process observations, you know, one at a time. Unfortunately, if you do that one at a time, optimization may not be very efficient because as we know, matrix vector operations are a lot faster than matrix, are a lot faster than vector vector operations on their own. So therefore, it's a really good idea to take small batches. If I take the full data, then it, it's very inefficient because I end up getting a lot of redundant information. If I just take a single observation, then it's very computationally inefficient because vector vector is a lot slower than matrix vector. So I take a mini batch. So what I do is I randomly sample some set B of observations to approximate the loss. And I now use this as a mini batch to perform the update and yeah, that batch size is another hyperparameter. Typically, mini batches of size, maybe 64, maybe 128, are a pretty good idea. And so, as I said, what you do is you basically take mini batches that are not too small, because otherwise the GPU is inefficient, and not too big, because otherwise you waste memory, you waste computation, and if all the observations are telling you the same thing, you're basically just getting a lot of extra advice that you don't need. So to summarize, a very simple way to solve a linear model is to take mini batches, update, and then we can see how it converges. As a matter of fact, we're going to look at that in some of the examples.